The beautiful Barossa Valley, just north of Adelaide, is famous for its wines and infamous for its witchcraft. The same Prussian, Wendish and Silesian settlers who planted the vines also transplanted beliefs in the supernatural from the haunted heart of Europe. One such settler was a man named Johann Gottfried Hoffmann, who arrived in South Australia on a ship called the Gellert from Bremen on the 21st of December 1847. Gottfried, as he was called, was born on the 7th of May 1826. A list of the immigrant families shows that most of them were from Polzin, present-day Poznan in Poland, but then a part of Prussia. Gottfried and his family settled in the Barossa, near the town of Lindok. Tragedy struck when his brother Johann Gottlieb died aged 26 in 1850. Later that year, Gottfried married Henriette Christian, his brother's widow, a custom known as Leverite marriage. By 1853, Jonathan and Mary Ann Ressel were neighbours of the Hoffmans in Lindock. Jonathan was a native of East Toft, Lincolnshire. The couple had an adopted eight-year-old daughter named Mary Ann Kingston. On the 5th of November 1853, Mary Ann sent her daughter to ask Henriette Hoffman if they could have some butter. The girl returned and said that Mrs. Hoffman had told her to send her mother to see her. Mary Ann went over and was astonished to be accused by Henriette of bewitching the Hoffman's cow and pigs. As she asked the other woman what she meant by this statement, Gottfried walked around from the side of the house. He took Mary Ann by the hand, and she at first thought he was shaking hands with her, but then she realised he was holding her tightly by the hand. Instead, he slashed her across the arm with a long knife he held, and then smeared the blood over his own hands. Mine cow's right now, he exclaimed. In shock, Marianne asked, What have you done? Hoffman did not answer, but stabbed her again in the arm, and then twice more in the back. Not finished, he grabbed up a large stick and began hitting her in the back between her shoulders, and finally, picking up a stone, struck her on the side of the head. Having fallen to the ground, the assault on Marianne concluded, and she staggered towards home. Glancing back, she saw Hoffman following her, holding a gun, but he made no effort to shoot her. Gottfried's brother Heinrich was also present, but after seeing Marianne stabbed twice, he shrieked and ran away. Later in court, he claimed that Marianne had come to the Hoffmans carrying a stick, and that she and Henriette had fought each other, and that his brother was not involved and had not seen any blood on Gottfried's hands. George Knotts, a surgeon of Gawler Town, attended to Mary Ann. She had a wound on her arm, an inch and a half long, which went down to the bone. The other stab wounds were slighter, and also some bruising on her shoulders. Gottfried was tried on the 1st of December 1853 for feloniously cutting, maiming, and otherwise assaulting Mary Ann Russell. Giving character evidence were William Matner, a farmer of Lindock Valley, who said he had known Gottfried for four years, and considered him a very kind and sober man, who he thought was incapable of such a crime. And August Mayer, the Lutheran minister at Bethany Church, who he said was humane to those around him. After only a few minutes' deliberation, the jury found Hoffman guilty. Justice Boothby, in passing sentence, said he wanted to show that using a knife in a quarrel would be severely punished by the law. He then sentenced Hoffman to five years' imprisonment with hard labour. On the 10th of December, the Adelaide Observer newspaper published an editorial about the matter, expressing disbelief that such superstitions still existed in 1853. An age of railroads, steamboats and electric telegraph, and cited the event as reason for ensuring that the children of the colony were provided adequate education to dispel such ignorance. It appears many of Hoffman's Lutheran neighbours believed that livestock could be enchanted by a witch. It was not established how Hoffman came to believe bleeding the person he thought was a witch would break the spell, but it must have been a widespread belief at one time. A man in England in December 1924 was jailed for a month for sticking a woman in the arm with a pin to make her bleed. He too believed she had bewitched his pig. In December 1854, Hoffman was given a free pardon by Governor Young 
just before he returned to England, and was released from jail. Apart from his belief that his animals were under a spell, and that he needed to spill the witch's blood to break the charm, he had always had an irreproachable character. Therefore a number of Lindock residents had petitioned for mercy on his behalf, being supported in this effort by the local Member of Parliament, George Fife Angus. Gottfried Hoffman and his family moved in the mid-1850s to Victoria, where he died at Vectris, near Horsham, on the 14th of April 1900. He is buried in the Quantong Cemetery. Jonathan Russell died aged 59 at Lindock on the 7th of October 1859. Mary Ann remarried on the 31st of March 1860 to John Foreman. She was widowed once more before herself passing away on the 25th of September 1879.